Good evening, everyone. Welcome to our Good Friday service. We uh, thank you for coming. And although a Good Friday is always a somber time because we think about the uh, death of our Savior, it's also an exciting time because without that, we would be doomed. We would not be forgiven of our sins. I want to read to you from John chapter 19, starting at verse 14. It says, Now it was the day of preparation for the Passover. It was about the sixth hour. And he said to the Jews, Behold your king, speaking of Pilate, Behold your king. So they cried out, Away with him, away with him, crucify him, crucify him. Pilate said to them, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priest answered, We have no king but Caesar. So he then handed, them, handed him, Jesus, over to them to be crucified. They took Jesus, therefore, and he went out, bearing his own cross to the place called the place of the skull, which is called in the Hebrew Golgotha. There they crucified him and with, with him two other men, on, one on either side, um, and Jesus in between. Pilate also wrote an inscription and put it on the cross. It was written, Jesus the Nazarene, the king of the Jews. Therefore many of the Jews read this inscription for the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city, and it was written in Hebrew, Latin, and in Greek. So the chief priest of the chief priests of the Jews were saying to Pilate, Do not write the king of the Jews, but that he said, I am king of the Jews. Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written. Then the soldiers, when they had crucified Jesus, took his outer garments and made four parts apart to every soldier, and also the tunic. Now the tunic was seamless, woven in one piece. So they said to one another, Let us not tear it. But cast lots of it, lots for it, to decide whose it shall be. This was to fulfill the scripture. They divided my outer garments among them, and for my clothing they cast lots. Therefore the soldiers did these things. But standing by the cross of Jesus was his mother, and his mother and his mother's sister, Mary the wife of Clophas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus then saw his mother and the disciples whom he loved standing nearby, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. From that hour the disciple took her into his own household. After this, Jesus, knowing that all things had already been accomplished to fulfill the scripture, said, I am thirsty. A jar of, full of sour wine was standing there, so they put a sponge full of sour wine upon a branch of hyssop and brought it to his mouth. Therefore, when Jesus had received the sour wine, he said, It is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up his spirit the crucifixion of Jesus Christ it is a good Friday it's a good Friday because without that we would be lost in our sins I read a story about a man that was walking down the street and he noticed in a store window a beautiful painting of the crucifixion of Jesus Christ he stood there gazing at the picture for the longest then realized that a little boy was standing beside him he patted the little boy on the head and said son what does that mean the little boy said, don't you know that their man is Jesus and the woman that's crying is his mother and them others are Roman soldiers and they killed him. The man smiled and started walking away and in a few moments he heard someone running and he turned and saw that it was the little boy and he came running up to the man out of breath and he said, Mr. Mr. I forgot to tell you that he didn't stay dead. Now that's the story of Good Friday. You can't have Good Friday without the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Today we remember that Jesus was slain for our sins, uh, but today we do not worship one whose body is contained within a tomb or in a shrine. We worship one that rose again. Today we celebrate a risen Savior. If you were to visit Jerusalem, about a block from the old city, you would find the garden tomb where it is believed that Jesus was laid after his death. Normally, more than 250,000 visitors a year visit the site. However, visitors don't visit the tomb to see where a dead body might be entombed. Uh, they go there to pay their respects to the one who is alive. They go there as a memorial to remember the fact that Jesus didn't stay dead, but that he rose from the grave. They don't go there to weep, but to worship a risen Savior. So if I may tonight, as we think about Good Friday, think about Jesus dying on the cross, I want to borrow the words from S.M. Lockeridge. 
uh, an African American preacher from years go by, and he said, it's Friday, but Sundays are coming. I want to draw your attention to certain ones that might be at the cross and what might be their thoughts as they're there. First, there were the ones that was grieved by his death. There were many that were devastated by the death of Jesus Christ. Many that were just heartbroken over the fact that our Lord was killed on that cross. And there were many broken hearts on that Friday. Only one can begin to imagine the despair that filled those who had walked with the Lord. They followed him, they knew him, and they loved him. You think of the disciples. This is the one that they had they knew was the Messiah. They had seen the miracles. They had seen all the things that he had done. And um, there must have been some uncertainness creeping to their hearts this night as they felt all alone in the world. Here Jesus had walked with them and they knew he was the Messiah and they put their hopes in him. But yet he had, been, he had laid to rest in a garden tomb. He's the one that made the deaf to hear. Certainly the blind to see, the lame to walk, and even the dead to rise. And now he had been snuffed out by co combined power by the Roman authorities and the Jewish religious leaders. Now he lay dead in a tomb. Can you imagine how crushed they must have been? Can you imagine how pointless everything seemed to be to them on that Friday? If it were possible to travel back in time, we as followers of Jesus Christ might go back there and we might wrap our arms around the disciples and say to them, Hey guys, don't worry. It's Friday and all seems hopeless, but Sunday's coming. Peter, I know you're crushed right now. I know your heart's broken, Peter. It's Friday, but Sunday's coming. John, I know the one whom you love. You've watched him die on that cross. I know your heart is crushed right now, John. It's Friday, but Sunday's coming. Wouldn't it be neat to have that message for them? And not just the disciples, but what about the women that were at the cross? There was not only Mary Magdalene, there was not only Mary the mother of Jesus, there was others standing there and watching Jesus hang in agony. But especially the mother of Jesus, she sat there and watched her son hang on a cross and bleed and die. And um, did, did she think about maybe the time of his announcement of his birth? Did she think about all the times growing up and the good memories? Did she think about his childhood and the time they left him in Jerusalem? Uh, can you imagine as she stood there watching her firstborn uh, bloody and mangled die? We would like to go back and see Mary and put our arms around her and say, Mary, I, I know this is horrible, but it's Friday. And Sunday's coming. There, there were other faithful people who followed Jesus and knew that their Lord had died. They may have watched their master die in that excruciating crucifixion. Uh, in love, these followers would have uh, been heartbroken over the fact that Jesus, their friend, their master, their God, was killed on a cross. And I imagine they made their places back to their dwelling and would sit in the chair and and would cry and grieve and we could go back in time we could grab each of them by the hand and say don't worry don't worry it's friday but sunday's coming those are ones that grieved for his death there's also some ones that were glad for his death not everyone was sad that jesus died there were several that were glad while some were in mourning there were those celebrating the death of jesus christ certainly the chief priests the pharisees and the sadducees had tried in many different ways to trip him up and to uh, trap him uh, in order to get a conviction. So certainly they knew that they would be better off. The faster they could get rid of him uh, would be the better. Then their opportunity came, one of their very own, Judas Iscariot, had offered to betray Jesus into their hands for 30 pieces of silver. By the way, this was the, the wage of a slave in the household it's not a it's not a big amount of money 30 pieces of silver but yet he betrayed the son of god for this amount and this seemed to kick things off at this point when he was betrayed by jesus judas in the garden he was arrested by the religious leaders and he was taken to the high priest's palace and they and put on trial he was run through a kangaroo court 
condemned on the testimony of false witnesses, they cried for his death. Several spit in his face, some hit him in the face with their fists, while others slapped him with the palm of their hands. He was mocked, prophesy to us, thou Christ, who is he that smote thee? The next morning he was bound and taken to Pilate, one after another, the chief priests and elders levied their charges against him. Finally, Pilate issued the death sentence. Like a celebrating courtroom after the verdict is given, I can imagine the religious leaders begin to shake each other's hand and slapping each other on the back and celebrating the verdict. How would it now be, he would now be out of their hair forever. Both the religious leaders of Israel and the political leaders of Rome could now breathe a sigh of relief. If we could get back in that time machine and travel back 2,000 years, we would like to go to them people and say, I know you're celebrating. I know you're having a party. I know you're happy over the death of Jesus. But it's only Friday and Sunday's coming. Oh, they would have been thrilled to know that they killed Jesus, this one that had caused them so much trouble, this one that took away their power, this one that was taking away money out of their pockets, but yet as they celebrate, we could tell them, hey, listen, listen, go ahead and celebrate. It's Friday, but Sunday's coming. And then there was one that I'm sure was gloating over his death, and we really don't see his name in the passage. We really don't see him um, uttering words here. But there's no doubt he was there. He was gloating over the fact that Jesus, the Son of God, was killed. Uh, he had tried to kill him from the first moment of him being born from a virgin's womb. He hated him with all time. And of course, I'm talking about Satan. And so there's no doubt he was whispering the lies in the ears of the false witnesses we don't see him or hear him, but you can be certain that he was strutting around like a victorious commander. He hated Jesus. In the wilderness, he did everything in his power to get the Lord Jesus to discredit and disqualify himself. He even offered him all the kingdoms of the world if he would but fall down and worship him. On another occasion, he riled up a crowd in the synagogue that took him and carried him out of the city uh, to a hill with the intention of throwing him off the cliff, but instead Jesus passed through the midst of them. And like a lion waiting for an opportunity to, to attack and devour his prey, Satan waited patiently for the right moment and opportunity. When the angry mob was shouting, crucify him, crucify him, one could have heard the devilish and sinister laugh in the background. When Jesus breathed his last breath and his head slumped over, how all the demons of hell must have broke forth in celebration and jubilation. The kingdom of darkness must have reverberated with cheers of victory and cries of we've won, we've won, as Jesus lie dead in the tomb. I'm sure all of Satan's kingdom, all the powers and principalities and the demons of hell celebrated the fact that the Son of God was dead. Oh, but if we could travel back in time, if we could be there when this happened, we could look to the demons, we could look at Satan right square in the eyes and say, go ahead and celebrate now. It's only Friday, but Sundays are coming. You may think you're victorious now, but come Sunday morning, it'll be a different, it'll be a different story. Oh, what a day Sunday is. S.M. Locker had said this, it's Friday, Jesus is praying, Peter's is sleeping, Judas is betraying, but Sunday's coming. It's Friday, Pilate's struggling, the council is conspiring, the crowd is vilifying. They don't even know that Sunday's coming. It's Friday, the disciples are running like sheep without a shepherd. Mary's crying, Peter is denying, but they don't know that Sundays are coming. It's Friday, the Romans beat my Jesus, they robe him in scarlet, they crown him with thorns, and they don't know that Sunday's coming. It's Friday, see Jesus walking to Calvary, his blood dripping, his body stumbling, his spirit burdened, but you see, it's only Friday, Sunday's are coming. The people, excuse me, the world's winning, the people are sinning and evil's grinning. It's Friday, the soldiers nail my Savior's hands to the cross, they nail my Savior's feet, 
to the cross, and then they raise him up next to criminals. It's Friday, but let me tell you something, Sunday's coming. It's Friday, the disciples are questioning what has happened to their king, and the Pharisees are celebrating that their scheming has been achieved, but they don't know. It's only Friday, Sunday's coming. It's Friday, he's hanging on the cross, feeling forsaken by his Savior, left alone and dying. Can nobody save him? It's Friday, but Sunday's coming. It's Friday, the earth trembles, the sky grows dark, my king yields its spirit. It's Friday, hope is lost, death has won, sin is conquered, and Satan's just a laughing. It's Friday, Jesus is buried, a soldier stands guard, and a rock is rolled into place. But it's Friday, it's only Friday, but Sundays are coming. Father, thank you for the fact that Jesus died. But Lord, we're so thankful that he didn't stay dead. That he rose from the grave victorious over death, hell, and the grave. And over sin. And he conquered Satan himself. Lord, thank you for Jesus. May we never get over the fact that he died for us. In his name we pray. Amen.